Hello and welcome to Tech Takshala. In this video, we will learn about CAP theorem. So let's get started. To first dive into CAP theorem, let's first develop the intuition by taking a real world example. When you go to a restaurant, there is always a possibility that food doesn't taste as good as you like. The probability of which is lesser in a well-known restaurant owned by renowned chefs like Gordon Ramsay in comparison to a fast food chain. This may come at the cost of waiting in long queues at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant or waiting for days if not weeks to get a reservation, which may or may not be the case for fast food joints. Now with that in mind, let's first expand the three properties in CAP theorem. First up is C and C is for consistency. And you might be asking yourself if it is the same consistency from acid properties of database systems. But trust me, this is different. And we have covered that in a different video. You can find the link in the description. By consistency, we mean that every read by a caller receives the most recent write. Let's take an example here. Let's say a user wants to fetch some data from the database. So we have our database master DB node here. Now users can directly talk to this master DB node, but since we are designing a large scale application, let's place some child DB nodes in front of this master DB. Now all these child DBs are doing some sort of read operation. So when we talk about consistency, we mean that whenever some user queries a child DB node, they get the most recent view of the master DB and no still data. Let's move on to the next property, which is A, and A is for availability. By availability, we mean that whenever a request hits a functional node, it either receives a valid output or a valid error code. To quantify, let's take another example here. Let's say a user wants to load a website, for example, www.google.com. So user's request travels through the entire internet and lands on this load balancer. This load balancer makes a decision to forward this request to a highly available healthy server node so that user sees the web page in some millisecond latency period. But as desirable of a property availability is, it comes at the cost of consistency since we need to send the data back to the user in a given amount of time. And it might be really hard to keep the view of the data or the database consistent all the time. All right, let's move on to the next property in CAP, which is P and P is for partition tolerance. By this, we mean that if a large scale system is divided into network partitions, then failure in communication between or within the network partitions should not cause overall failure in the system. Let's understand more closely with an example here. Let's say we have two users. Both users want to fetch some data from a database node, but due to their different geographical location, user one is talking to NYC DB node and user two is talking to a BGS DB node. And both these nodes are sharing some sort of uh, state between each other via the internet. Let's say that the network between NYC and BGS went down. So according to being partition tolerant, user one and user two should still be able to talk to their local DB nodes even when the two nodes are not talking to each other. All right, I hope we now have a high level idea about properties in CAP. Let's see the theorem. So according to the theorem, we can only select two out of three properties and out of these properties, network partitions should always be tolerated, which leaves us with the choice between availability and consistency. All right, to understand it clearly, let's work on a flight booking system here together. Let's imagine a scenario. We have Alice and Bob who are trying to book the last ticket on an airplane traveling from NYC to LA. For the sake of this example, let's also imagine that Alice is somewhere in US and Bob is somewhere in China. So the high level overview of the system would look like that Alice interacts with a local data center that is in NYC, which is a partition inside US and Bob interacts with his local data center in BJS, which is a partition outside US. Right now, they are both competing to purchase the last ticket at the same time. Let's imagine that all the network communications is as ideal as it could be, which means that there is no failure or latency in the network communication uh, between Alice. So Alice talks to the local data center in NYC. NYC makes a call to the partition or all the data centers outside the part, uh, US partition and check if the ticket is still available. Same thing goes for Bob. Bob's uh, BGS node is also doing the same thing until the very end where Alice successfully buys the last ticket and checks out and Bob gets the resource unavailable error. And same thing goes for Alice as well. 
where she might not be able to get the last ticket and Bob wins the last ticket. But since we live in a real world and nothing can be as ideal as we wish them to be, we are having network failures between the US partition and outside the US partition. And this could lead to degraded availability of the website. You may want to pause this video at this point and think that what will you choose between consistency or availability. Since as we read that network partition should always be tolerated. Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. Alright, I hope that you did your due diligence to come up with the reasoning. We may want to prefer availability over consistency in our flight booking system to provide a better customer experience. In order to gain more availability, we might allow both the nodes to keep accepting flight reservations even if the communication line breaks. The worst possible outcome of this approach is that Alice and Bob both will end up making the flight reservation. However, such situations can be resolved using a little bit of domain knowledge. It's a pretty common scenario that the flights are overbooked and the flight companies address such cases by taking appropriate measures such as refunding the customers or offering them another flight in a different plane and etc etc. So that was mostly about the choice between availability and consistency. But what really happens when the network partition do recover? Let's take an example of e-commerce website to understand it deeply. Often on e-commerce websites, let's say Walmart, couples share the same customer account. Alice and Bob are a couple here who are in different geographical locations. Alice is in London and Bob is in Boston and they are adding items on their Walmart's shared account shopping cart. As they are in separate geographical locations, Alice's cart exists on the London database node and Bob's on the New York database node. Let's consider a scenario. When a network failure occurs in this distributed system and the two nodes that is London and Boston are no longer be able to communicate with each other, it results in a situation where Alice's cart doesn't show the items added by Bob and vice versa. Now here is a brain teaser for you. If you were building this e-commerce system, will you allow your customers to keep adding items into their carts or will you just stop the communication and uh, have the network failure be impacting their overall experience? We recommend you to pause this video here and think of a solution and let us know down in the comment section what approach you came up with. All right, let's say if you are designing an e-commerce application like this, you probably don't want to restrict your customers from adding items to their carts as it will deteriorate the customer experience and the business may end up losing money. There are several ways to recover from such network partition scenarios. One possible solution can be to trigger the checkout process only after ensuring that the partition has recovered and then merge Alice's and Bob's cart into a single cart. If you're curious about learning more on partition recovery techniques, then we recommend you to watch the talk by Dr. Eric Brewer himself. You can find the link in the description. So let's summarize that what are the key lessons that we learned in this video. First off, CAP stands for consistency, availability and partition tolerance. And do keep in mind that this consistency is different from the consistency in SS properties for the database. We can only choose between two out of three properties while designing the network partition distributed system. And network partition should always be tolerated, so obviously that leaves us with the choice between availability or consistency. And this choice is heavily based on the trade-offs uh, pertaining to the dom domain knowledge. And this choice is heavily based on the trade-offs pertaining to the domain knowledge on which the system is built. There are different ways to increase the consistency. But the most prominent one is to increase the number of nodes in the overall end-to-end -end communication between the nodes to ensure proper locking mechanisms, but obviously this comes at the cost of latency. One can achieve better availability by adding more nodes in parallel, aka horizontal scaling, so that the load balancer can make a decision on where to send the request and get a timely response back to the user. But this does come at the cost of consistency. So that is all for this video. I hope you learned the key concepts on CAP and will be able to apply while designing your next distributed systems project. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Also, please subscribe to our channel TechTechshila for more videos on system design. You can also head over to our website to get more explanation on the current video and take a fitness check at www.techtechshila.com. 
We also have a link for you in the description. With that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.